welcome. Glad you're here. Introduce the last piece of the staff, Mr. Josh Jamison from the University of Oregon. Uh, me and Josh have been friends for quite some time since my days out there. You won't really fully understand as I say this to you. One of the brightest young basketball minds in the business has done everything it takes to run a program from A to Z, from scheduling to whatever it is to run a basketball program, this man has done. And he is a hell of a basketball coach. This opportunity is a benefit to us more than I can tell you. And I'm happy that he's here with me. It wasn't easy getting him out of Oregon. Uh, sort of like it wasn't easy for me to get out of New York. So we did a great job of keeping it under wraps and doing it the right way. Questions? Kenny, you said you didn't want us to even see which way you were coming in the room. Do you feel pretty good about I feel this one? Great. I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and as, this, as time goes on, um, guys, you'll understand that what I basically have done is put together a staff that is a great staff. Not good. It's great. But in no way is that the end of the puzzle. The second part of the puzzle is getting high-end talent to come in here so that we can build a culture of winning. I surrounded young people with the best of the best minds in basketball that all have a culture or are coming from a culture of winning. A championship culture is what we're trying to build here. So this is just another piece to it. Can he, as far as with the higher, obviously recruiting is such a big thing, and Josh has never done that. What, how, how will you go about and and be key with kind of helping him do that? And and he's seen it done. He just hasn't done it. Well, he has done it. Um, he was at Portland, um, where he did recruit, not on this level, but he has recruited. Uh, but more importantly, recruiting is just building relationships. He knows how to do that, and. He got me by his side to help him with it, as long as as well as Nolan and Danny Manning. So that's not an issue for us, and it won't be an issue for him. I can drop him off in anywhere in the United States, and know that he has it. So, did you guys work together at Oregon? Is that where the relationship started? And and secondly, um, as you move forward. When you think about when you first started out, like how you wanted to put your staff together, did it work out exactly how you wanted it to go? Exactly how I wanted this to work out, it did. Um, and yes, we worked together in Oregon. Uh, when he started, he started out in operations there with, when I was there. Um, a very, very, very strong basketball mind. A great developer of players. Um, all of the success that the University of Oregon has had over the years, and I don't know how much you guys keep up with the West Coast, he was right there. So he's coming from a culture of winning on a big scale. So his basketball knowledge is second to none, and uh, he's going to be a great asset for us. Kenny Bean, uh, I imagine he probably expected the, you to reach out when you, got that, uh, when you got this position. What was his reaction to you when you first did? I think he was a little taken back. <laughs> no, I think I think that you know, for me, it was more. Is this something that you would consider? Um, I think that he was thinking that I would, or maybe I would, but not sure. Um, you know, because he's been in the operations position, that I would look at it like, you know, I don't need an ops guy. He's more than an ops guy, and I've always known that, and I've always told him that. So I guess when I call, Josh, you'll be able to answer that question later better than I can, but uh, the emotions that he felt and his wife, Amy, um, you know, they're happy to be here. Kenny, when you go through this process of hiring new coaches and talking to people, how much are you selling the past of Louisville or what you're trying to do? I mean, how much is, like, a mix of that? that makes it what I'm trying to first of all do at the same time is the past, yes. What made what makes Louisville great, yes. Uh, but more importantly, 
how do we surround these kids with loving men, with teachers, with people that, and we talked about this early in the process with Josh, I don't want to sit in a staff meeting and the coaches are saying negative things about players. Fix the problem. We're never going to talk about the problem. Fix it. Um, and if we can do that, we're way ahead of the ball game. Kenny, you mentioned he's more than he was more than just an ops guy. How much does that help having an assistant coach now by your side that you'll have an ops guy, you'll have, you know, Kenny, you'll have other people. How much does that help you to have someone else like that who's on your staff? Tremendous help. Um, his background, graduated business school, uh, very organized, uh, put together practice plans, game prep. Um, guys, when I tell you <laughs> this man is really smart, I'm under saying it if you understand what I'm saying. He's more than what I'm telling you. And over time, you'll see his impact on this program. Kenny, now that you have a full staff, how, how do you think maybe what these guys do complements each other? What do you think about them in terms of a, a unit? It was why I put the staff together the way I did. Um, I wanted like like tight minds, um, people that the core of who they are are about giving giving their knowledge, giving their experiences, uh, people that can sit in a room and not be worried about the next person and what they're saying that can be open um, and can work together. Um, again, you know, in a million years, I could never thought that I would be able to put a staff together like this. I really believe I have the best staff in college basketball. And as somebody who was an assistant for a long time, how important is it that you, for you that you give guys a voice, that assistant coaches feel part of it? It's vital. Um, I never want to stifle guys from having a voice. Um, and what I basically have done is have I hired guys and told them all, you will be coaching. Uh, I need your input. Uh, you're going to have a voice with me. And that's refreshing for them. And they'll embrace it, and they they get the they get the coach. I mean, it's one thing to recruit, it's one thing to be in the gym, just you and the kid, but it's another thing to talk about game plans, talk about strategies to a team, um, and each guy will do that. Kenny, when you were a player here, Denny's staff at that time had very strong personalities. They had uh, very contentious, I think, in a positive sort of way meetings they challenge each other a lot do you envision that type of staff where guys are very strong-minded and challenge each other i think we have the type of staff that we know for example i know what nolan smith is i know what danny manning is he knows what danny manning is um challenge how about we just use a different word and say embrace what each other is saying <laughs> Kenny, we, when you you, talk, you said talked about how how smart he is, uh, can you give an example of a time he really showed you that he's a different kind of thinker? Um, you know, there's been so many. <laughs> um, you know, when you talk about a person that is maybe doing the whole schedule for a team, when you talk about a guy that's organizing everything that it takes to run a program, um, practice plans. Uh, gym times, um, the business of what it takes to run a program, uh, the budget, um, A to Z. Like, he could easily be sitting in a general manager spot on the NBA team. That's how smart he is. Uh, but on top of that, not just with that, you're talking about a basketball coach, a really good basketball coach. If you talk to Peyton, Peyton's um, – Hayden Pritchard, you talk to Chris Diorte, you talk to um, um, Dylan Brooks, the kid, what's the guy, Rittenauer, Freddie Jones, Luke Jackson, they all, Cal Singler started right here. So he's a basketball coach. 
Kenny, you've been waiting for your opportunity here for a long time. And, and I know Danny's been a head coach before, but do you also want to help some of these assistants if they choose to want to go be head coaches one day, kind of groom them and, and get them ready for their opportunity? I think that's a part of why I hired them. Um, you know, is it easier to work for a guy that's going to tell you, I need you to be great? And when your opportunity comes to go take it and run with it, or do you want to work for a guy that's not going to tell you when opportunities come and try to hold you back? Um, I think in order um, to get the most out of people, they got to know you care. Not just the kids. How about the coaches as well? We know you like to be secretive now. Um, <laughs> But we have to ask, how is the rest, I mean, the rest of your staff, is it coming together well? When I'm finished um, with the whole gamut of putting the whole thing together, you'll see it's, it's going to be even more special. <laughs> um, there's a lot that goes into this, um, probably more than I expected when I first started. Um, but I'm, what I'm trying to do is, again, surround young people with the best of the best. So I feel good about it. Kenny, just in the, the years you were away with the Knicks, the transfer portal changed so much about the way you recruit. How, how's that process been, and, and how have you felt about the reception kind of you guys have gotten there? I feel good about it. Um, a lot of it is helping young people decipher through or cipher through what's real and what's fake. Um, the NIL, the, you know, so many schools are telling kids a lot of different things. What's true? What's not true? What's important? What's not important? Um, so it's been a little different, but, you know, I feel like at the core of it, if you're honest with people and you tell them the truth, that, you know, they don't want to be on board with what ultimately they want to do. Take one or two more, anybody? Kenny, since we last talked to you, you got – Roosevelt said he was coming back. Just, you know, you, you said the last time I think we talked to him, you wanted him back and, and you got him back. Just um, the thoughts of keeping him. Uh, I think, you know, his mom called me and she prayed with me and um, thanked me for being the type of person that I am and talked about her son and, and what she wants for him. Um, <clears throat> and I told her that I'm going to work him hard. I'm going to love him. I'm going to be fair with him. Um, but he has to grow up and, and embrace this because this is different. And um, she said that I won't have a problem. And if I needed to take a belt off and spank him, I could do that. <laughs> 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 sort of like that. She didn't say it exactly like that. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Jerry Eves, you didn't ask me a question. It's all good. Okay, I love you. <laughs> all right, we'll let you shift over to the middle here a little bit. So, Josh, you know, big opportunity, stepping out from the, the director of ops role into you know, a member of Kenny Payne's first staff at Louisville. What's that mean to you? Uh, it, it's really kind of hard to believe, hard to let it sink in. Uh, welcome to all of you, and it's nice to meet you for the first time. For me, this is uh, a culmination of a lot of years of a tremendous relationship with Kenny and a shared philosophy that we've had about the ability to do things a certain way. And I'm all over the moon for the chance to, to get here and to really be part of the program that he's putting together. I think it's a new day in Louisville. I think it's a very exciting one. Josh, Kenny alluded, and I don't know if you can really tell us everything, but, but um, what was, how did you sort of see your role at Oregon? What were you doing? And what do you think the transition will be into this role? So uh, I think... Uh, First of all, I should take this opportunity to thank Coach Altman, uh, a man that I love, a man that I've worked with for 12 years. Uh, it gave me a tremendous opportunity. I did not know him at all when he uh, came to Oregon. I was already there. I had been with Ernie Kent for three years with Kenny. And so in that time, I think it would be safe to say I probably grew to more of a COO 
role. Uh, Coach was definitely the CEO uh, and overlooking, you know, all of the pieces of it and especially being able to focus his mind onto the court, which was always my goal. Uh, and as, as a COO role, I felt like I needed to take the pressure off of those things. So we went definitely up to uh, what was allowable in my role to have uh, an impact with basketball. Uh, which means that I could do a lot of the behind the scenes work, but not the work on the court. Uh, so coach and I and our staff would work together a lot there. Uh, it's a long list uh, to, uh, to go through of just the different job responsibilities there, but probably the easiest would say if you can imagine something other than basketball, I had a hand in it uh, on a day to day basis with both our staff and our players. I guess what made you, I guess, go back and forth before you had to make your decision to come to Louisville? Uh, well, listen, I spent the last 15 uh, amazing seasons at Oregon. I had spent three prior to that from 2000 to 2003 in a graduate manager role. That was the first success uh, that the program had really had. We went to an Elite Eight in 2002 uh, and won a conference championship for the first time in 40 plus years. Uh, since then, we've won another four conference championships. It's kind of been an unprecedented period. So within that time frame, I've built unbelievable relationships. Uh, when I say that I feel like Coach Altman is a part of my family, I mean it. And the same way with uh, other staff members and players, but we've grown very close. Uh, what did what truly won out was the opportunity and my belief in Kenny and the shared philosophy that I feel we have together. Uh, it was a tough choice. Uh, my beautiful wife Amy and I have uh, spent quite a bit of time talking about it, and you know it, it still brings up all sorts of interesting emotions. But at the same time, this is Louisville basketball. Over that period of time, how much did you actually want to get – was your goal to get on the court and actually coach at some point? The goal has always been that. I began my career as a high school basketball coach, uh, probably never viewed that uh, I was going to do anything but be a high school basketball coach. And I had four great years uh, coaching at my alma mater before going on to do the graduate uh, work at Oregon. I went back and coached uh, high school. That's when Kenny alluded to Kyle Singler. We can talk about that connection in a moment because that leads to Nolan. But uh, basically, there's always been a desire to be on the court. Uh, there's always been an opportunity when it came to get on the court. Uh, and it's something that I've never wanted to let get rusty, and it hasn't. Um, I, I know you had some quotes from Peyton that he, you know I, he talked a lot when we were discussing this about pre-draft preparation and those things that he was doing that it gave me a real opportunity to spend kind of that COVID period in the high intense kind of workout regime. And so I think any of our former guys would say when I have had chances to step in and if you keep in mind some of the rule changes from the last couple of years have allowed me to be on the court when other staff members were away. Uh, and I was the designee when there was staff that was traveling for recruiting or any other purposes. So I've definitely stayed up on that. It, it is a, an art. It is also a science. And I think I've studied both of those. Josh, what's it like? Um, yeah, I think the whole career that you've gone through was out in Oregon, kind of in, that, in the Pacific Northwest. What's it like to be just moving to a different part of the country and doing something new? Exciting. Brand new and exciting. I don't think in life that there's any way you can know what's around the corner. So when this opportunity came up and Amy and I had the opportunity to make the decision to come here, uh, it was uh, long deliberated, but it also seemed to make a lot of sense. The recruiting question uh, that we that I asked Kenny earlier, I mean, it's been a while since you have, but you've seen it, you know it, you probably coordinated the, the recruiting efforts. How, uh, what will that be like for you to, though to jump back in? I think that's a totally fair question and one that thankfully through my relationship with Kenny he had no doubt about. I have no doubts either. What it will be is just getting 
back out, building the relationships, continuing uh, to build on ones that are already there. Uh, people get caught up in what the operations position does. There's still a great deal of interaction, uh, again, within what's allowed. So uh, I can certainly get to know uh, all of the AAU and all of the, the travel coaches and uh, it was a benefit to, to be at Oregon because we did have a lot of uh, proximity to Portland where there was a lot of different events where people came in nationally. Uh, I don't have any concerns about it and probably the, the strength of that comes from I know Kenny doesn't. When you talk about doing basketball things right up to, to what's allowed, did that include, and were you talking to coaches about strategies? Were you talking about offensive and defensive philosophies, that oh. kind of stuff in your own? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's interesting because in most cases, people don't really understand what it's like behind those office doors. But this, posi my position as director of operations or executive director for the last year still allows me to sit in and, and watch and be part of planning, be part of discussion. It really just limits it to the presentation to the team. Uh, everything else, uh, up into including, you know, written reports and other things, is totally and completely allowable and was totally in the scope of my position. What, what was your connection to Kyle Singler and then to Nolan? Okay, so uh, I grew up in Medford, Oregon. I attended South Medford High School uh, and we grew up my home, which my mother still lives in in Medford, is two streets away from uh, Ed and Chris Singler's house, Kyle's parents. And so when I returned from uh, my time at University of Portland and coached at South Medford were Kyle's uh, junior and senior year. So we uh, worked very closely together, did all of the skill development preparation stuff together uh, and went right up to when he chose Duke, went to Duke, and I actually went with him when he moved into a dorm room with Nolan Smith and John Shire. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, uh, it's amazing how the world works. Have you talked to Nolan? Does he remember that? Uh, you know what? Nolan and I have been, of course, in touch. We've, uh, we've played against Duke a couple of times. We played against him in the NCAA tournament and have been in the same, uh, same places. He remembers, I still actually have a uh, Smith Shire Singler Attorneys at Law t-shirt from the 2010 uh, championship game. So, yes, uh, I, I'm sh we have not talked, uh, as uh, you guys alluded to, the uh, amount of secrecy to this position. Uh, I have not uh, had any conversations with Nolan or Danny or... Uh, my mom's lucky to know. That, that, that was, was going to be, I was going to say, what, what has this been like? First of all, I guess go back. Did you expect Kenny, he said he thought you might expect him, him to call you. Did you expect him to call you for this? And then what's it been like to try to keep this a secret? So the thing with my relationship with Kenny uh, is that it's not something that I would ever take for granted. And with that, I did not reach out to Kenny at any point with any indication that I was interested because I felt like that would compromise the relationship that we already had, which was that this was never going to be based on a what can you do for me uh, scenario. And I think that that sometimes gets lost and it's to my values that was the right thing to do. Uh, it moved very slowly. Uh, I don't want you all to believe that this was something that has been long, long planned out. It has not. I don't know how much I'm supposed to say, but I can tell you, I can tell you that uh, it, I did not uh, have a former offer formal offer letter until was it yesterday morning or two days ago? Two days ago. So this it's not as though, and, and it's important to me that I state that because. Uh, in speaking with Coach Altman, uh, I let him know, uh, and Kenny reached out to him. Kenny did an amazing job contacting uh, the people that I that he felt like he needed to, because he knew that I was a large part of that program at Oregon, and there's some prominent people that we are very close with that needed to at least be aware. 
Uh, and he also reached out to coach, and then it did get quiet for a while. And in that time, I actually wasn't 100% sure. And he'll tell you, I never called to ask him the status of anything. I never called to determine where things were. Uh, again, had he made a decision in a different way, I would have loved and respected him exactly the same. So when he was named the coach here, did you think, gee, I hope he gives me a call? I actually had more people that sent me messages just based on people that knew the strength of our relationship that said, well, you know, when are you moving? Uh, and uh, I, I disregarded that as much as I could because, again, uh, I certainly have always thought about, uh, Kenny and I have had uh, more late night conversations than could be counted. Uh, and in those, we've always discussed wanting to do something the way that he had this vision for and that I felt like I shared a vision for. And so uh, definitely was had interest. I, he and I spoke about the job before he had decided whether or not he was going to, to do it. So he didn't have to offer you Kentucky Derby tickets to get you to come He did here. not. He did not. No, as a matter of fact, we're leaving because uh, we won't be here for it. But I'm, I've heard it's a really fun time. So we'll be here going forward. My wife's picking hats out. So the, and This is the third one of these press conferences we've done where one of Kenny's assistant hires is effusive about him, sure. what they like about him. That, that there's a, a kind of a personal affection element to it. What is it about Kenny that seems to draw that out of people? It's really hard to describe in words just the feeling that he gives to people. I have watched what he has done for young people, uh, what he has stood by and never strayed from the values of putting the young men and their families first. Uh, in believing that there's a right way and a wrong way to do things. Uh, there's just so many instances, you know, some I'm more comfortable talking about even than others, just because, you know, I've seen some personal instances where Kenny's compassion, his loyalty, his, his, his ability to bring out the best in people. I mean, that's just, uh, those are all admirable qualities that just uh, attract, I think, good people to want to work with him. Do you see some parallels in his experience and yours? That he, he waited a long time to be a head coach, had some other opportunities and took the right one. You've obviously been doing something other than assistant coaching for a while and now transitioning into assistant coaching. Yeah, I do. I think that that's fair. I think that we were both patient. Uh, and I think we both love where we are and put everything into where we are. And I loved Oregon and put everything into Oregon and, and Coach Altman's program. And I couldn't have imagined a better decision than doing that. And so I think to, to what you're saying, absolutely, I think there's some parallels in saying, hey, we're going to be where we are and do our best. And then when something comes along, you know, you give it the, the, the necessary amount of thought. And that's why we ended up here today. You're going from basically Nike land to, to Louisville, which is basically the top school for the three stripes. Um, are you able to, what, from your perspective, you know, what is that, that shoe battle like, you know, I guess maybe on the recruiting trail and all different aspects of the college game? It's really interesting because I thought Kenny's answer, and I don't want to piggyback or make myself sound like I'm in the, the same position he's in because I'm not, but I have developed unbelievably close relationships with people at Nike, um, up to and including, as you know, Phil Knight's very present uh, within our program. And he has been wonderful to me. Uh, and then a lot of other uh, folks, I, I spoke with Howard White this morning, who's a vice president of the Jordan brand, um, Eric Lautenbach, who has been you know, in charge of college basketball for Nike for a really long time. I worked with Trish Houck, who was a wonderful representative with us. Nico Harrison was there at the time. All of these folks, you know, that were relationships that we made, and everyone, I guarantee you, my phone will be filled with congratulations from those very people. Is it a battle when it comes to a dollars and cents? Does Nike want you to wear Nike and Adidas want you? Of course, that's the business of it. But at the end of the day, if your relationships are built on something real, you're not 
you know, you're not worrying about those things at that level because they know that for my career, for what I hope to be able to do here for Louisville, that those are all positive things. There's no takeaway, uh, no negatives. Coming from Oregon, all you know, you, your whole time out there, what do you think of the Louisville basketball brand that now you're part of? It's been, I mean, I was one of those young guys that I was, you know, late 90s playing on the dunk hoops, you know, outside and talking about being – Corliss Williamson and Grant Hill and these guys and but always then in the back like knowing that Louisville basketball was you know when people said blue blood you thought of only a handful of programs and Louisville was one of them and to be sitting here right now you know is just is an incredible thing I mean you feel the power of it you you go around this community uh, you just see how much people uh, seem to be devoted to Louisville and Louisville basketball. And that's very exciting to be part of. Josh, what do you feel are the, you touched on this a little bit, the shared characteristics, I guess, uh, or the characteristics of the shared vision that you and Kenny have together to run a program? And do you feel like it's different than a lot of programs out there? Yeah, the last part of that question I think is complicated because you never want to deride anyone else for what they're trying to do, and I tend to believe most people are doing the best that they can. I can speak to my belief that there is a place in college basketball for a very player, family-centric approach to development. Uh, this does not mean rainbows and butterflies. This does not mean that when you show up each day, it feels like you're, you know, living out the ultimate fantasy. It feels a lot more like real life feels. Uh, I know everyone in this room is going to go home and, and has a nagging thought or two about something in their life that's not going great. To me, it's how do you, with this amazing staff, and I believe that between Kenny, Noel, and Danny, and whomever else is part of it, the focus is always going to be on the young men and their family that are trying to reach their dreams. And that's the shared philosophy. There's a lot of things that are muddying those waters these days. I don't know the exact outcome of our plan and idea. Uh, Kenny is going to be an amazing leader to put it into place. I cannot think that there's a better person to do so. Any, any more? Would you remind the yes, please. The far, far better half. This is my wife, Amy. Hello. Okay. Great to be here. She is very excited, honey. You want to? Well, just thank you. It's been a great welcome so far. We're happy to be here. Sure. Well, like to That's, That's what we heard. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for bringing it for our visit. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thanks.